performance. It's about uh, what should we do in order to try to, you know, what is the first approach to identify the main reason why a Power BI report could be slow. And when we say slow, we mean uh, slow in uh, querying the report. So we're not talking about uh, slow refresh performance. This would be a completely different session. This is about uh, uh, query performance. So um, my name is Marco Russo. I work at SQL BI. We have a large number of uh, content uh, for uh, DAX and Power BI and data modeling. These are the areas where we focus more, but uh, for Power BI, we only focus on data modeling and uh, DAX mainly. So you can find a lot of content and also several articles about uh, what I'm going to describe today. We also have in the book, uh, Definitive Guide to DAX, uh, a lot of uh, content. So let me remove this here so it's easier to see. This is um, the agenda for today, and uh, this QR code is simply linked to download uh, the demo files that we use, uh, just in case you want to try the same thing. Even though I think that for this specific uh, session, we um, the importance of uh, the demo files is relative because you can use uh, the same techniques that I will show you with your model, right? And uh, the idea is to take a look at the tools we have available, why we should use these tools, uh, and what we can do with that. Uh, then the optimization by itself is something we don't have the time to, to discuss, but I will, I will show you something, some example of the optimization we can do. So I have a few slides, just a recap, but uh, we will spend most of the time in Power BI and uh, in running these tools, running the demos. Uh, and. Uh, the starting point is a slow Power BI file. As you see, we have here an um, empty page. So I opened a Power BI file that has an empty page because uh, when I would switch to sales, uh, the sales page, you will see a report with many visuals. And uh, you will see that it will take uh, some time to refresh the page the first time, whereas following refreshes could be uh, faster. But usually we want to improve the performance for the first uh, view of a report or the first view of some new parameters. And uh, so pay attention when I will click on sales uh, about what happens. You will see that uh, many visuals will appear, and, but then the content of these visuals will wait for a few seconds to appear. So now I'm going to click and uh, you see that uh, we immediately see the, the layout of the report, uh, but we have to wait some time before we look at the numbers. And in particular, this last uh, visual, this uh, small table, this small matrix that appeared uh, in this uh, corner of the report uh, took much more time. Now, when I click on uh, this slicer and I click, for, for example, on Asia, what happens now? You see that I have to wait one second, and after another second, this appeared again. But now what happens if I click on Europe? I have to wait again. But now if I go back to Asia, you see that the time required to refresh the report is immediate. So we have, the reason why I wanted to show you the empty page is because when you want to analyze the the slow report, you have to be able to catch the first execution of the report, because otherwise you will be uh, measure the several level of caches that you might have in Power BI. I will discuss this in a moment, but the idea is that the first execution is important. So the tools that I will show you in a moment uh, have to be ready before you show the first page the first time. So this is the first uh, lesson. So we have to be ready to intercept uh, the, the, the slow operation. So for this reason, I'm going to close this uh, file and I I'm going to open it again, this one. And uh, this way I will start uh, from scratch uh, from a situation where the report is empty. And uh, the first tool that I will show you is uh, Performance Analyzer, which is uh, a tool that is part of Power BI and that uh, enables me to uh, capture the operation that uh, happens uh, to populate a report. And uh, so now I go here in view. I also have this zoom tool. So you see view and performance analyzer. This shows here this uh, tab, 
this pane, sorry, where you can start the recording. Now, when you click on start recording, this uh, pane listen to any event that happens in the report area and track uh, the actions that have been executed by Power BI in order to render the page. So let's see what happens now. I'm, I just started the recording and I now I click on sales. You see that I will see the same, uh, you know, population of the layout, but you see here we have a large number of uh, visuals that are executed. And uh, every visual has a duration. And this duration is a time in milliseconds. So if you divide by 1000, you see the number in seconds that uh, has been required to complete the rendering of each single element of the report, starting from the initial refresh action of the entire report. Now, if you look at these numbers, you see that every visual took uh, between four and eight seconds to complete. But uh, it should be clear that uh, we are not summing these numbers. These actions have been executed in parallel. So, this is important because you have to realize that we are not, we don't have a visual that took four seconds or another visual that took six seconds. You cannot sum these two numbers because a few of these operations run in, run in parallel. And uh, if I click on one of these visuals, you see that the time that you see here is split into three different uh, items. Tax query, visual display, other. So let me describe quickly what happens when uh, you run a report. Power BI has a number of visuals to be displayed. Each visual has a number of filters that you applied. And uh, this produces uh, a DAX query that require to the engine the information to display. In this case, the information to display is just a number. Look at this uh, area. This is a single car that displays a single number for Northwind Traders uh, sales uh, of products that are red. But uh, if you look at uh, this other area here, you see that the, the result here is a table that has many rows. So every time a DAX query runs, there is uh, what we call a, a data cache. So a result of a query it is simply a table that then is uh, shaped according to the visualization. You might have a chart, you might have a matrix, uh, and then that content is displayed by the visual. So the DAX query actually extracts the data from the engine, from uh, the technically the, the DAX engine and the Vertipack engine that has the data in memory. And if you look at this, you see that uh, we waited for 45 milliseconds before this uh, this action was completed. After all, we're just getting a single number. If you look at the big picture, when I click here, you see that uh, one visual is highlighted. So this A datum here is this uh, visual. The second one, Adventure Work, is this other visual. If I scroll down and I click on Prosware, oh, this is here. If I click on this other Adventure Works, this is here. So there is this synchronization between the visual and the list of the items in the performance analyzer that could help you understanding uh, where is the, the um, what is the correspondence between uh, the visual element and the list here because sometimes you have the same name for different visuals and uh, once this visual retrieved the single number that has to be displayed then visual display is the amount of time that uh, the visual spent to actually render the visual, to draw the text, uh, the label, uh, the background, uh, the chart, whatever. So if you sum these two numbers, the real cost of this visualization was less than 100 milliseconds. Nevertheless, we waited for four seconds. And so when you see this other, you might think, oh, but the main reason why this report is low is because we spent four seconds here. How can I optimize this other? Well, the thing is that uh, you cannot optimize this other because this other is basically time that uh, this visual waited before starting to do anything. Look at this report. How many visuals do we have? Many, tens of visuals. 
but you cannot run uh, so many operations in parallel. Internally, the engine, the user interface, the DAX engine, every part of this uh, stack in Power BI has limitations on the number that, of operations that can run in parallel. And so you can imagine that there is a queue that uh, uh, describe the operation that had to be completed. And so the engine extracts the tasks from this queue and then execute them. So how can you optimize this other time? Basically, you have to reduce the number of visuals because you have to reduce the number of requests that are made to the, to the, to the engine. And so this is the first explanation. So this performance analyzer provides you very important information, but the way this information is displayed here could be misleading if you don't realize what is the meaning of this number. Now, if I look at uh, what happens when I click on Asia, you will see that when I click on Asia, the um, rendering took, you know, still a few seconds, but less than before. So if I scroll down and look at what happened, when I change the slicer, I have these other timings, but you see that still I have two seconds, not four, like the first time, but now two. And this is normal. The first time you open a report, there is always some additional latency that when you, you know, when you start uh, navigating through the data that you have already in memory, Uh, Marco, we can't hear you anymore. J the mic just uh, stopped. Uh, I think you you seem to be in mute, if I see correctly. In the... Okay, someone muted me, yes. sorry. <laughs> Pro I promise it's not me, but it's just, uh, yeah, yeah. we just lost no, lost I, your last I, sentence. I see, I see the message, someone muted me. Okay, that, that's fine, that's fine. No problem. No problem. So I repeat, I repeat what I, what I, what, what I was saying. So when I, when I change the slicer here, I can see that the timing was reduced, but not so much because I still have to, um, you know, I can see, I still have to execute a lot of operation. However, when I click on Europe and I click on Asia again, you see that now the result appeared much faster than before. Why? Because now we are not doing any preparation of the query. And you see that the biggest difference is that now there was no query sent to the engine, only visual display and other. And again, other is still the slowest operation. But again, other is just a time to wait for other visuals to be completed. So actually, when you look at this data, you should only focus on two things, DAX query and visual display, just ignoring other, because the only way you can optimize other is by reducing the number of visuals. There is no other way. And so the first lesson here is that when you have a report that has many visuals, tens of visuals, tens of DAX queries, you cannot expect very good performance. So the first rule, try to reduce the number of visuals you have in a report because you reduce the number of operations in the stack and in, in, a, in the queue and, and this will improve the performance overall first. Now, why we don't have the DAX query here? Well, Power BI has a, a cache at the report level which means that when you are in a situation where you have a combination of filters that is identical to a combination of filters that you, your user, used a few seconds ago, then uh, the previous result is used instead of running the query again to the, to the, to the DAX engine, right? And you can see that in Performance Analyzer, you see that there is no DAX query here, no, no DAX query at all. However, the visual display still takes some time. And you might discover that the visual display took too much time, takes, takes too much time. When this happens, what is the solution? Try to find a, a different visualization or try to optimize the visualization. A classic example is you have a chart and you put one point in a map. Imagine you have a map and you put one point for each customer and you have 30,000 customers. Guess what? 
that map will be slow because you have to draw, you have first to extract the location and the size and the color of 30,000 points, Dax query, and then you have to render them, which will take longer than rendering just maybe 100 points, right? So depending on the visualization and the complexity, this could take longer. So we have the someone that's just, it's not clear for them uh, what's the other part of the performance uh, is representing. C could you yes. just repeat this part, please? The other part uh, is basic. So imagine this. We have, in this page, we have uh, several visuals, but not all of these visuals can be executed at the same time. So internally, there's, there is a queue of tasks that have to be executed. So the page has, let's say, 50 visuals, and imagine that your engine, in a configuration you have, can run four tasks in parallel. Guess what? If you have 50 operation, 50 visuals to complete, 50 queries to, to execute, you can execute the first four and the other 46 have to wait. This waiting time, the waiting time for something else that has to happen is computed here, is displayed here in this other which means that you don't have a way to optimize this other, because this other is just a synchronization time waiting for other visuals. You don't have a way to optimize other other than reduce the number of visuals you have in the report. This is the only way you can optimize other, okay? So I think that this kind of, this kind of visualization is misleading, because I don't have a way to optimize other. What I can do, I can optimize uh, the DAX query, I can optimize the visual display up to a certain point. Now, if I have, uh, let's say, 20 visuals, now I, I am going to an extreme here because I definitely have too many visuals here, okay? This report is a bad report. There are too many visuals here, period. You don't have to create a report like this. If you want to create a report that has so many, um, what I'm using here, this is a card the visual that has just one number and there are two, four, six, 11 of them for each brand of the products. And I repeat these 11 for every color. Now, instead of creating 33 visuals to display 33 numbers, I could use a single visualization for each color, which uh, duplicates uh, the card for every brand. For example, Car with States is a visual that is available for free on uh, the app source that does this or you can find another visualization. But the idea is that uh, if you create too many visuals, uh, for example, you want to obtain a particular visualization by combining in a small amount, in a small area, three, four, five visuals, each one to display a dot, a color, a minus, this is gonna be expensive. I understand that the final result is appealing, but it's expensive. Try to reduce, try to find a single visualization that does the visualization you want, because you have to reduce the number of visuals. Now, the next issue here is the following. Uh, okay, you can uh, clear this and you can refresh the visuals. Uh, so re-executing, enforcing the execution of the DAX query for each visualization. And when I do that, uh, I, you can see here, I can sort, uh, the, the default is this. I can sort uh, these uh, tasks uh, in an ascending or descending order. So let's use the descending order. So if I use the descending order, basically I'm putting uh, the slowest visual first, okay? This is what I'm doing. But if you think for a moment, if this visual, I mean, is this visual really the slowest one or is, is it another one? Sometimes it happens that the first visualization that you see here is not the slowest one because it is just waiting for maybe five se four seconds and then it, say it executes 380 milliseconds. So maybe that there is another visual that uh, is executed uh, before others, uh, but it has a very slow DAX execution time and is slowing down all the other visuals in the report. So it's not a very, now in this particular case, uh, I'm lucky because the matrix is also the visual that has the slowest DAX query time. But as you see, you can decide to use different uh, um, different numbers for this sort of order. And because uh, you can only have an impact 
over the DAX query. So what can we optimize in our model? Basically the DAX query. So I suggest you to sort these uh, visuals by the DAX query time. This way, when I do the, the, the sort, the, the, the ascending or descending order, I know, for example, look at this. This Southridge video took three seconds, but actually it was the quickest uh, DAX query. And I, if I do this, I can immediately spot what is the slowest visual for the, the DAX uh, execution, which is uh, the important part of our analysis, because usually we want to optimize some DAX code. So assuming that we reduce the visuals, we will still have this as the slowest visualization in the report. So what I'm suggesting you to do when you have your report, uh, try, to do, try to do an analysis of your report using this tool, uh, Try to figure out whether the cost is DAX, the cost is visual. But if it's the cost is other, then you just have too many visuals, or you have a single visual that is slowing down all the others. Okay, so depending on this, you can arrange your prioritization. What I want to teach you today: where should you spend most of the time? You should spend time trying to locate the slowest visual in the report, the slowest DAX query in the report the slowest measure in the report, optimize that, start again, until your report is quick enough. Of course, if you realize that you just have too many visions, then you have to try to reduce the vision. But sometimes you realize that, the, first of all, we have to optimize this. And this two seconds for a DAX query is unacceptable. A DAX query running in two seconds is low. This model has uh, less than one megabyte. It's, it's a very small model. But I will show you in a four billion rows model, uh, this is a very slow query. I should run DAX queries in milliseconds, 10, 20, 30 milliseconds. And guess what? If I look at the uh, fastest query here, there is a query here, it's just 10 milliseconds, okay? And it is slower to display the, the text rather than getting the data from, from the engine. So it is very important to realize that the DAX query should be fast, but if you execute the 50 queries, even though, if, even though the query is fast, the infrastructure, the overhead for the call takes time. And once again, reduce the number of visuals, reduce the number of DAX queries, okay? So this is what Performance Analyzer is doing for me. Now, as you see, performance analyzer, so let's go to the slowest query here. You have seen that I have this click, this uh, link, copy query, that allows me to copy the query in the clipboard. What does it mean? If I open the notepad now, if I paste the code here, this is the DAX query generated by the report, by the visual in the report. And I know that this is the slowest query of my report. So what should I do now? I could go to DAX Studio because I need an environment where I can execute this query as is and maybe gather other information about uh, the execution time. And DAX Studio is the tool that you can download from uh, DAXstudio.org or you can just uh, search for DAX Studio on uh, your favorite browser. You will easily find uh, this tool that I'm opening now. And uh, the version I'm showing you will be probably out this weekend. Uh, currently, you can download the 2.10, but in a couple of days, we should have a 2.11, which is the one I'm using. But uh, for what we are going to use today, we, you will not see any difference. And you see that uh, you can connect it to an instance of analysis services or to a Power BI model. Now, in order to connect to Power BI, you have to open Power BI, open the report, and you can connect to a, an existing open instance of Power BI. If you have multiple uh, open files, you will see here the windows with Power BI files that are currently open on your desktop. So you cannot open a PBIX file from DAX Studio. What you have to do, open the PBIX file from Power BI desktop, and when this file is ready, then connect uh, DAX Studio to it. So let's connect here. And what happens? Now here I have this pane that uh, shows me uh, information about uh, my tables. You see that uh, I can see the tables that I have, I can see the measure that I have, uh, and uh, when I move uh, my mouse here, I can, always, uh, I can also see, uh, you know, a list of sample data, the minimum, the maximum, how many unique values I have for each uh, 
uh, column and so on. But the main part of DAX Studio is this area, the DAX editor, where I can pay, remember I copied in the clipboard my query, I can paste this query here. And you see that I can, okay, I can zoom in and out and I have a bigger area for my editor. I can also click here to call DAX formatter to format the query. Sometimes this, uh, you know, makes the code more readable using the standard formatting uh, uh, that we use uh, at SQL BI. Now you see here that we have these buttons uh, run and clear cache, but let's start with run. Run allows me to run this query and look at the result where in a grid or I can export the result in a file or I can just uh, run the query just to see how much time it takes to be executed even though I don't look at the result. We want to see the results, so we run this query in a grid. And uh, when I click on run here, you see that uh, this pane of results shows me the result of the query. Okay, I can also zoom this here. And you see that uh, my query here produces this result. Now, if you think for a moment, uh, what is this query? This query, I go back to Power BI. This query was used to populate uh, this matrix. I enlarge the matrix and you see that uh, the matrix has one row for each product and here a number which is the result of a measure that is uh, computing the number of unique customer who bought that product. Then you have a total here which is not the sum of the customers because the same customer could uh, buy multiple products. So if you scroll this uh, list you will see that uh, the number, there are many lines actually, but uh, I have only two columns here, product name and customers. Now take a look at the query that has been generated by Power BI. The query generated by Power BI produces uh, three columns, not two. One column is product name, one column is customers, but the additional column here is called is grand total row total, which could be true or false. When it is true, the line is the grand total that is displayed here at the bottom. Look at this, total 413. This is the grand total. And so Power BI basically receive additional columns with information that allow the visual to organize, to render the data in, the, in a meaningful way for what the repo requires, okay? Now that we have this, of course, if you know DAX at this point, you can play with this. You can see that, for example, the query contains every filter applied. What is this uh, instruction? This basically is the filter over Asia that I obtain by clicking on a slicer. So my selection in a slicer, my selection in another visual is always present in this query. So the query that you receive contains everything that is required to obtain the result that you see in that visual. Uh, so any other filter depending on other visual is here in some way. And this is important because at this point I can run this query several times uh, measuring the performance. DAX Studio has a number of tools to analyze the performance of the query. You can see you have query plan, you have several times that are tools that I'm going to use uh, very, very soon. But before introducing that, this, since I shown you the performance analyzer, I want to spend uh, one minute about this other tool, which is called load performance data. Let me go back to Power BI. You see that here I have, a, sorry, I have an um, export button. What happens when I click on export? I can save a JSON file with the performance data I captured in this session. So let's save this in the, my temp directory and I save this file. Now, this is a JSON file. So if I go here, oh, let me open the note, oh, sorry. Let me open notepad and I open here the same file I saved now, performance, here we go. Okay, so this is not a file easy to use, right? But this is a JSON file with a format that we know, which means that uh, Duck Studio has a tool that can open this file. It can show me the file in a mm, easier to use uh, format. I'm showing you this because the file that I'm gonna open contains many more information 
than those that you have seen in uh, the visualization of uh, Power BI. You see here, when the query started, when the query is finished, uh, uh, how many rows have been returned by each query? And you see here the, the timing that is just the total here is just the sum of query and render. You don't see the other time that was really confusing. And then you have for each uh, visual, you have this uh, query that if you click, uh, if you double click this, uh, this, um, this line, you will simply copy the query here, obtaining exactly the same result that you see now. Uh, I show you this in, in a moment. So I, I, I copy in the clipper what I had before, because when you double click a line, you also have a few additional information here. So you see that uh, uh, every information that has been captured by Performance Analyzer can be used in uh, DAX Studio too. Now I go back, uh, so this was just, as I said, just one minute, because now we want to spend time on other tools so I can, uh, uh, I can close this uh, tab, because I want to focus more on these two elements, query plan and server timings. When I enable these uh, two elements, you see that for each uh, button here, sorry guys, for each button here, we have an additional pane here, query plan. And I, when I click on server timings, I have here server timings. Now these two panes are empty, but as soon as I click on run, I will see this data populated. So let's try run. Remember, this was my slow query, right? The query was executed and uh, the information are captured from this query. And here we have two important information. First, sorry. We have this uh, pane here, which is uh, the server timings pane. And remember, we only analyze one query at a time with these tools. So we have to capture the query that is lower than analyze this query. So we see that this query ran in uh, almost two seconds. And we have here a few information that I will describe in a moment. Uh, but uh, many of you would expect, uh, oh, let me see the query plan. Let me see something like a graphical execution. Uh, like a SQL Server query plan, but unfortunately it is not so nice. The query plan is divided in two parts that I can show you. There is a logical query plan, which is basically um, object tree of the elements in the syntax that you wrote in the query. And it doesn't tell you much more than uh, what you get actually in the physical query plan, which is a detailed analysis, a de sorry, a detailed description of the operation executed by the engine. With here highlighting uh, the number of records processed by each node of the query plan. But as you see, the query plan can be very long and not very easy to understand. Uh, Sometimes the query plan, I mean, for this query that is very, very simple, we have uh, a few hundreds of rows, but sometimes we have many more. Now, this could be really uh, hard to understand, but uh, let me describe this. So the query plan, the, the physical query plan, is like the actual query plan in SQL, which describes exactly what has been executed. And uh, this is uh, the description of the operation that we have uh, at the formula engine level. The engine that runs DAX is divided in two parts, the formula engine and the storage engine. The storage engine is where the data is stored. When you load, when you import data in Power BI, import data in memory, the storage engine is called, is a, has a name that is called internally Vertipak. And Vertipak has uh, the ability to access compressed data to do very, very quickly simple aggregation operation. But uh, when you compute uh, a formula like uh, the median, uh, which is a statistical operation, then the formula engine has to be involved. But the formula engine has to retrieve the data making a call to the storage engine. So what happens is that the formula engine calls the storage, state, the storage engine, the storage engine provides data to the formula engine that process the data received from the storage engine. The storage engine could be different. If you use direct query, your storage engine could be SQL Server. And the storage engine query is simply a SQL query, but you still have the formula engine to do some more complex evaluation. So this difference is visible here. You see here that this query has been executed in two seconds uh, and the time, this is the waiting time. So how much time we waited to get to the result. We waited for two seconds, uh, but 33% uh, of the time has been spent in the formula engine and 67% into the storage engine. 
at this point, I should say you, well, looking at this number is bad because uh, spending uh, so much time in the storage engine is crazy for a model that is very small. So wait a minute, how big is my model? Before understanding whether the number are big or small, we have to get an idea about the size of the model. And Duck Studio has this uh, tool, View Metrics, which is an integration of another tool that is called Vertipack Analyzer that uh, provides you information about uh, the size in memory, the number of rows of each table. So let me show you here. The model we are querying has just uh, five tables. And the biggest table is the sales table. Actually, the biggest table is the customer table. And another big table is sales. Uh, and you see that sales uh, has only these columns. And you see here the cost of each column and the cardinality, the number of unique values that you have in each column. You can see that the cost of uh, the table is different on a column by column basis because every column is compressed in a different way. But uh, what you should see here is that these numbers are small. Um, what does it mean? Uh, I, I, I show you this uh, by showing uh, a very simple example. I connecting uh, my, uh, I created another session that I connected to this model audience. What is audience? Let me show you. This is a big model. I had to enlarge this because this model has a table that has 4 billion rows. And this table that has 4 billion rows requires 17 gigabytes in memory. OK, 17 gigabytes, right? Now, let me write a query here, evaluate. Uh, for example, I want to get here. Let me see if I have a count. No, this one is not. So let me do a simple sum of audience. And uh, let's use uh, a number here, wait. OK, so I'm just doing the sum of a column in a 4 billion rows table, right? I run my server timings, and I clear the cache and run. In a moment, I will start this. And usually, we have to always execute the same query twice. But even though this is the first execution, that is the slowest execution ever, Look at the numbers. This execution took uh, less than two seconds. OK, I waited less than two seconds for the first execution. But if I execute this again, even though I clear the cache, this is still executed in uh, less than one second. When I say a query running in two seconds is low, it's because it's relative to the size of the model. A query in two seconds for four billions rows is uh, good enough. But a query here in a model that has 10,000 rows, which is a tiny fraction of the 4 billion rows, this should, be, this should run in, a, in microseconds. How is it possible I get this query on 10,000 rows running in two seconds? So they, I have a problem in my query, right? Now, let's explore this. So it seems that we have a problem in the storage engine. The storage engine should be very fast. And it is fast. It is fast. Look at here. Every execution, every request, that the formula engine does that the storage engine is displayed here in this list. And you see that uh, even though we're querying an internal object, the columnar store engine, this is not SQL, but the description of the storage engine query made to the internal in-memory engine is uh, similar to SQL. This is called XM SQL. And uh, just because it describes the request, and every request is running between 0 and 16 milliseconds. It's not random. The accuracy of the measure of the storage engine query has a, a precision of 16 milliseconds. So you will never see uh, 2 or 4. You will see always a 0 or 16 or more, right? Even though the duration is, uh, is in milliseconds is more accurate. But again, you see that uh, every query is fast. What is the problem? The problem is here. We ran 429 storage engine queries. So basically, what is happening is that for every row of the result, for every row of the result, the formula engine is running a different storage engine query. Okay, so now I know I have a problem. How is it possible? If I look at the query here, I should realize that this query has only one measure from my um, model, which is this customer's measure. And if I look here for customers, you will discover that uh, you will discover that here we have a single measure called customer, and you can include in this uh, 
uh, area, if I click on define measure, I can include here a local definition of the measure that overrides the definition of the measure that I have in the report, which is very, very interesting. Now I can modify the DAX code of my query and of my DAX measure without any side effect to the real model. I just, uh, I just say, okay, what happens if I change the calculation here and instead of executing this calculator, so let me comment this, instead of executing this calculate, I return here 42. What happens? If I run the query now, you see that every row has 42 and the server timings now is executed very, very, very fast. What does it mean? My measure is the problem. I'm doing something here that is very, very slow. And uh, what is slow here? At this point, I cannot help you today because uh, you need to know DAX. You need to know how to uh, analyze uh, the query plan, how to understand the correlation between what you write in DAX and the operation executed in the uh, storage engine and in the formula engine. And I can tell you that here I'm making a you know, common mistake. I'm filtering a table. I'm filtering a table when I just have to filter a column. When you write calculate, you should filter columns, not tables. So if I rewrite the query this way, and just to keep the same semantics, when you replace the filter that I'm writing over a table, I have to write key filter. But this is not mandatory. This is only if you convert the code to another code to avoid having a different result in the report in certain conditions. So if I write the code this way now, and I execute my query again, what happens? Now, the very same query that, that generates the very same result was executed in 21 milliseconds. Why? Now I run only two storage engine queries. And every storage engine query is fast. It's just, just two, three milliseconds, three, four, five milliseconds. And I have two. Why? One is getting uh, for each product the number of NIC uh, values of the customer key column in the sales table. And the second does the same operation for all the products. If you think about this, uh, this thing count is a uh, uh, non additive measure so you cannot sum the rows of the report the, the total is another query and uh, you have two storage engine queries because now you have one storage engine query for each granularity of your calculation so the idea is that uh, i have to use a performance analyzer to figure out uh, where i have a slow visual when I have a slow visual, I have to investigate about, okay, is this a problem of DAX or is it a problem of the rendering of the visual? And when I say, okay, the problem is DAX, I can do something. I can copy the query in DAX Studio. I can execute the query in DAX Studio and I can include in my DAX Studio query the measure definition or the measure definitions that I have in this uh, uh, query so that I can apply changes to these uh, measures without affecting the real report. Now that I know that this measure is faster, now that I validate that the results are still good, I, I have to check that the changes I made to the measure not only run my query faster, but also produce the same result. Now that I'm safe that, okay, this is working well, I can copy this query here. I go back to my uh, model here and I edit my customer's measure, replacing the code with the optimizer code. I did a simply copy and paste. Now I click this, I can clear this pane, I can refresh the visuals. And now you see that my report is still not exceptional in performance. Now it's taking too long, but Again, because it is the first time probably after we um, executed a, a change to the model. But you see now that uh, the only slow thing is other. And you will see that if I refresh the visuals again, so let me clear and refresh visual again, this second execution would be slightly faster, but not too much. Again, remember, we are sorting our queries. If you remember, we are sorting by DAX query time. So the slowest execution now is 68 milliseconds for this uh, visualization. 
which means that any other visual has a faster execution. But now the only optimization I could do is just reducing the visuals, uh, reorganizing uh, my report so that I reduce the number of DAX queries that I'm executing. So let me go back to the slides uh, just to recap what we have seen. We have seen Power BI Performance Analyzer, which uh, is integrated in Power BI and uh, provides you a first uh, quick look at uh, what could be the slow visual, the slowest visual in your report. Then we have seen DAX Studio, which is a tool that uh, is free, open source. You can download, install, and uh, provides you a DAX editor that uh, is designed to create a DAX queries or to execute DAX query and to analyze the performance of the queries. Then uh, we, okay, we have seen also the integration between uh, uh, Power BI Analyzer and uh, DAX Studio. Before this integration, we had uh, this all queries button that I didn't show you, but I basically can listen to every query sent to the engine or to analysis services uh, while you are executing reports, but with Performance Analyzer, the need for this uh, tool uh, is no longer so important. And uh, however, I said, uh, should we consider the two seconds a slow number or a fast number? It depends. It depends on the size of the model. How can I know how big my model is? Uh, I have uh, this uh, view matrix that integrates Vertipack Analyzer that provides you the information embedded now in DAX Studio. You will see here links to the more detailed Vertipack Analyzer tool that provide you additional information about the compression, about many other details that are not really needed when you do this quick analysis, quick investigation. Then I explained what is the query plan that you see the logical query plan, the physical query plan, where the physical query plan corresponds to the actual execution plan of a SQL Server uh, query, whereas the vertebra queries are the requests made from the formula engine to the storage engine, to the uh, vertebra engine that we have seen. Now, the vertebra engine cannot solve all the queries, uh, but we always try to move to the storage engine the largest amount of work uh, with the minimal number of uh, storage engine queries. This is the classical best approach uh, to optimize your code. The storage engine query basically returns a table because it queries compressed data in memory and provides this data back to the formula engine in a table in memory uncompressed. So you have to remember the result of a storage engine query is uncompressed in memory. So when you get a lot of rows to the formula engine, you materialize a large amount of data in a temporary table in memory. This could be another reason, not something that we have seen today, but it's another common reason for slow reports. The query in the storage engine query is described to humans uh, with this uh, language, XM SQL. Internally, this is not the language used. Uh, internally, there is an object tree that is uh, transferred between the formal engine and the storage engine, but the human readable representation of this uh, object model is uh, in this uh, XM SQL query. That is easy to read, it's very simple. You will find uh, uh, documentation and uh, examples uh, in the links that I provide at the end of uh, the, the slide. And you can also download the slides with a QR code that I showed you at the beginning and that I will show you in a minute. So basically the storage engine scan the data in memory and provide the result in an uncom uncompressed way to the formal engine. We call these uh, results data caches. If the formal engine requests the same uh, result twice to the storage engine, it probably can reuse the previous request. So there is a cache at the storage engine level, like there is a cache at the repo level. These are two different caches that work in a different way. Uh, the storage engine cache is useful uh, uh, for the operation that are made by the single user, even though it could be useful also on a analysis services with many uh, analysis services server with many users. Uh, to reduce the workload of scanning the data in memory continuously. So conclusion, when you have a slow report, first of all, identify the visual that is the slowest one, get the query of that visual, so you have a query that can reproduce uh, the problem. We call this a repro query. Once you isolate this query, move this query into DAX Studio and start uh, investigating the measures included in that query, finding a way to optimize the execution time. 
Um, how can you do that? Well, we have uh, white papers, uh, we have uh, books that describe how the storage engine works, uh, how the formal engine works, uh, how to read the query plan. It's a long discussion. It requires, uh, consider this, we have a course optimizing DAX that is, uh, I think, uh, 10 or 12 hours uh, just of lectures bar plus uh, 20 hours of exercises. So it's a huge amount of time that you need to invest if you want to really understand how it works. But after all, you, if someone of you may have uh, learned how to optimize SQL queries, how to read the, the query plan in SQL is not something that you can complete in an hour. But I hope that I gave you the starting point uh, to investigate on the slow DAX queries. Here are the links to the tools that we have seen. I didn't show you the user interface of Vertibac Analyzer, which is a workbook you can get from DAX Studio, but today most of the features are already embedded into DAX Studio, so DAX Studio is the primary tool that you have to use. You can download from this link and this QR code these slides, the demo file that I used, and so all the links that you have seen, you don't have to type the, the to, to, to copy and paste the, the code. So do we have any question? Um, thank you, Marco. I've checked the conversation from the beginning. Uh, I only um, uh, had one uh, at first. You, you will see lots of messages. We did have one small issue for some people to join the meeting on the mobile app, but so don't, don't mind uh, on that. Uh, we do have a, one question from uh, Vincent Lacombe. Is there any reference of the average acceptable size per row of, of a table? Uh, do you have any maybe best practices about that uh, or is it depending on, on the model? So it's, uh, it depends on the hardware, it depends on, the, on many things, but I, I can say that. Power BI Desktop, uh, I, sorry, Power BI Desktop, I can, uh, I can um, use, uh, you know, a few, you know, 10 million rows, 20 million rows without big issues, usually. If you have, uh, um, if you have, for example, uh, Power BI Premium, or even Power BI published uh, on the cloud uh, in a shared capacity, with an incremental update, you could load even uh, 100 million rows, 200 million rows. It's still, it depends. If you optimize the columns, it's uh, achievable. The real issue is how many unique values you have in the columns. Having columns with uh, two, three million of unique values could be a problem. Or having a relationship between tables where the one side of the relationship has more than one million rows could be a problem. So these are the elements to consider. But when you scale to analysis services, you could have 10 billion rows like I had in uh, the example that I shown you, and it works very well, but you have to be very, very careful in how you optimize the model. So I will not be concerned about the number of rows of the table. There are other elements that are important, like the number of unique, row, unique values in each column and the cardinality of the relationships between tables in the model. Yes, very clear. Um, we do have uh, two other questions. Um, just for for others uh, people, uh, we we have still one few maybe two minutes to to answer questions. Yep. Uh, don't don't uh, uh, for every everyone on the call. Don't uh, don't hesitate to to chat on the on the cafe. You you do have a lot of uh, thread that you can directly speak with the speaker. So don't worry. Uh, I will. Uh, end the meeting uh, in few minutes, uh, but uh, you, you still can uh, have some some conversation with uh, any speaker. Don't don't. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I can say if yes. Yeah, yeah can, th thank you, thank you a lot, yes, Mark. No problem. No problem. Uh, the, w let's let's take uh, one two questions. Um, uh, someone is asking if the data source type uh, have impact on the performance of the model. Uh, so do, do, if uh, you are in the <laughs> SQL Server, MySQL stuff like that. As long as you import the data in memory, it yeah. makes no difference. Yeah, of course. If it's you use uh, direct query, it's yeah. totally different. But uh, those of you that uh, think a direct query is a good idea, by default, direct query is wrong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 so let me be very, very clear. By default, direct query is the wrong answer. Okay. Then we can discuss, we can have a long conversation about this, but direct query usually is. Uh, should be the right answer in very, very 
very few exceptions. I'm scared by the number of people that want to deploy to, to create a model in, in a SQL because in direct query because they are afraid of uh, moving data, copying data. I, I don't understand that because uh, the solution to improve the performance is to create uh, um, the, 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 you know, the, you have this uh, sort of cache over direct query, which is basically a table process in memory. So I, I, I really don't understand the, what's the point. Uh, of using that query and then creating hundreds of aggregations uh, when this is not necessary if you simply load the data in memory. And so I, I really don't get the point. I have, uh, and I tell you this because I had uh, many customers who approached us because they had a problem in that query and the solution was remove that query. And the problem was, uh, oh, but uh, we have too much data that we cannot store in memory. And it was false. It was a false assumption that they had that problem. They didn't spend any time looking at how to optimize the data in memory. If you optimize the data in memory, you can load. Uh, remember, I had uh, I shown you four billion rows in seventeen gigabytes. Come on, so we can store a lot of data. I'm running this demo on a laptop. I don't even have a big server. Come on, so focus on. Uh, I have a tool that is very powerful, but I have to adapt the model and the data to my tool. So for example, I have a date time. I don't have to import a date time column. I import a date and a time. And the time I truncate to the millisecond, maybe also the second, because I want to reduce the cardinality of the columns. This is, you know, the first two rules, the first two <laughs> rules, right? So yes, of course. You can optimize for the memory. That's the point. Yeah, very clear. Uh, I share your, your, your point of view. Uh, and the last one to, to wrap up, uh, which will be a yes or no answer, I guess. Um, tabular model and Power BI uh, are uh, analyzed the same way to uh, regarding performances. Identical. When you run Power BI, you're running analysis services. Yes. I'll show you. Uh, yeah. Task Manager. Yeah. It's easy. You have, I have here Power BI somewhere. Let me check. Yeah, there and you have a local instance of uh, uh, Yes, so somewhere here. There, uh, there should be Power BI. I don't remember where it is now. Come on. Anyway, you, you, uh, now it's frozen, but uh, uh, here we go. Uh, PowerPoint Power BI desktop. And uh, if you look at what we have here. Just at the bottom. Yeah, here we go. Analysis yes. services. So yeah. it's actually the same engine, the same code is the same code base. I mean, it's identical. Yes. Well, thank you again, Marco. It was very, very enlightening. Uh, uh, okay. I learned a lot. I hope everyone here learned a lot. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you and much. thank you to 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 be able to to stay a bit uh, to just chat with uh, yes of course with some people uh, in uh, the same in the same uh, room or? no you you <clears throat> so for for everyone uh, please uh, still use all the Power BI Saturday 2020 public uh, uh, thread uh, channel yeah. you do have the Power BI channel you have the Le Café uh, feel free to ask questions. To ping speakers to, okay. to 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 interact with them. So yeah, I, I guess Marco, you, you will have most of uh, maybe your your interaction with user in the Power BI uh, can, uh, channel. Ah, Power BI channel. Okay. 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 Thank okay. you again. I will uh, stop the recording and uh, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.